out last time around. We got this UI uh, cleaned up a little bit for the transcript readout from the, the video recording. And um, I've been kind of going back and forth on what to do next. So the, the original idea with this, right, was that um, to basically do what I was already doing with processing the, the, the VODs, the local recordings of the streams, where I would basically take the video um, between breaks, right? So I take a break like every hour now, it used to be every hour and a half, but every hour, and then I make that, you know, I cut that video up, trim off the ends, upload that to YouTube, uh, add title description, you know, all, all the stuff. Um, and, and long term, I want to do more than that, right? I want to have like something that's going to generate like highlight, summary, shorts, um, or really just more automated video editing. But um, that is... <laughs> A little ambitious and I think a, a good first step is to do the thing that I already said that I wanted to do which is just to automate what I'm doing now um, so what does that mean right so we have this transcript and I think this this will be useful information we'll want this um, it would be nice if we could like okay we can tab out does that leave the field Okay, so this is good. I huh. What's going on here? Why does this say twenty one nuts? like a bug, maybe. What what is this A21 nuts? One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> hmm. Is that an issue with the data or with the formatting of the data? So here's another one. Right, so I would think that this should be the end. What is this a duration? I mean, if this is a duration, then this number should be larger. Discord. Um, probably, to answer your question, Foxy. I don't know, I had to go back through and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm. That, that is interesting. Um, so this data, oh, right, right, right. Oh, Foxy. Thank you for the gifted sub to Quora uh, Auto. Hey Alex, how's it going? You saw me live in Marxie's Discord. Yes, I think there's a couple of Discords. I think in Foxy's too, I get an auto shout out. But I'm here, I'm here every Sunday working on this coding project. <laughs> hey, uh, how do I say your name? I think I ask this every time. Nate V. Hunter? Hydrate? Okay. Oh, hey, like three hydrates? Oh, geez. So many hydrates. Well, you're not even going to be able to see me drinking water. Um, also, my water is empty. 
Let me let me follow up on that. <laughs> Frown respect. <laughs> Is that something from the transcript? Uh, good games are going. A uh, little, well, some good, some bad. Yeah, uh, I, I guess that is true, Foxy. Um, the games are going good. Can I call you? Uh, can I call you Nate? Is that all right? Yeah, complimentary schedules. Um, I've been doing a lot of grinding off-screen on uh, Greg Technic Horizons. This is some modern Minecraft stuff, so that we have materials for tomorrow's stream. But other than that, you know, uh, pretty much all my gaming is on <laughs> stream. Should do some Jackbox. Um, maybe if uh, Foxy hosts again, or um, I guess that's, I th think that's a free thing, right? So you could suggest that in the gaming channel on Discord, Alex, for next Friday, and we can put that in the poll. Since uh, Fridays are uh, viewer choice, Discord suggested uh, everyone polling. Polling. Um. All right. Oh, I have to buy it. Is it like how much could it possibly be? Only I could type. Okay, I got it tapped. All right, I'll check that out later. Um, so, but today though, today we're working on this coding project. And uh, I think the, the goal today is going to be, depends on the, the pack phrase, okay. What we're going to try to do is Yeah, big brain day. Maybe, maybe, we'll see, we'll see. Um, like, the immediate thing is I noticed that the, the values here don't add up, and I wanna understand why that is. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, but then, then, um, I think what I want to do is look at getting the data for the silence detection, right? So, we should be able to very easily identify where we want to cut the video up based on blocks of silence. Um, so we can use that to then generate a cut list to then be able to import into uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, I don't know if we're gonna get all the way to DaVinci Resolve today, but Maybe we can at least use the silence detection API that we built, get that showing up at the front end, and maybe have the front end then like spit out, hey brainless, good morning. <laughs> um, have it produce um, regions of the overall video for us to then cut up. And that'll be a good next step. Then after that, then after that, we can um, use the transcript we already have for the period of time in which the cut uh, episode exists to uh, then um, generate like a description for the for the episode. But that's several steps down the road. I think the immediate thing I want to understand is why this says seven minutes and then 21 minutes. That doesn't make any sense. All right, so we say segment end, 21 minutes, 28 seconds. Can we see React components? Where's my face at? 
I, I don't have my camera running on the Sunday morning streams because it's too early. It's too early for a camera. But you get my voice and you get a graph of my voice. <laughs> All right, where? Can we see this in the React? Components tree. Okay, where are we? There's a few components on the. Oh, yeah, you know what? There is a little inspector thing right here we can use. There we go. Alright, so the component that we're inside of here is the stream transcript segment input. And this should allow us to see what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, the hierarchy. <laughs> So a lot of that is coming from the fact that we are using React Admin and React Admin uses Material UI. And so all the UI elements have a lot of stuff going on. There's, you know, many levels of nesting going on here from the tooling that we're using. And that does mean that like the code that we're writing is simpler, right? So if we look at this view, in the front end for our component here, the stream transcript input, you know, it's a it's a simple function, right? It's a lot of stuff buried inside. All right, so why why does this why does this say twenty one minutes? Is that something to do with the input? So we can see the props here. So it says. PT 488 point something seconds is the end. PT 454.880 seconds is the start. Now, are we doing math on the values here? Because like 488 seconds is Eight minutes or so, not 21. And 454 divided by 60. Seven and a half minutes. So that, that part makes sense. So the second value, where is that coming from? Like we did something here. Uh, let's see. Stream transcript segment input is the component. And so we have segment start and segment end that are kind of the parsed. So these are numbers. So I think this is a, a number of seconds. And then we format duration. So I would guess that um, our parsing logic is wrong. probably has to do with a regular expression, which I think uh, we had Copilot generate for us. I could be wrong. Uh, let's do this though, you know, we can do a couple things here. We, all right, uh, let's get rid of this. I was going to, I was going into this sort of stuff, but I didn't know where to start, so I skipped it. Never trust Copilot. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, Brainless. Uh, so let's do this. We have an example of something that we think is not working right. So we do a couple things here, right? If we add this example, yeah, sure. That's this. So here's a fun thing. So Copilot thinks that the comment for this <laughs> should be 48.8. Uh, I don't know that that's true. In fact, I'm pretty sure it should be, well, I mean, 
and maybe it would lose precision, but it should be something like that. You know what would be good? A unit test. Um, Alex, though, to, to get back to your comments, it's, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, any, any kind of programming you do these days, there's just so much. Um, but there's so many good tutorials. Yeah, you can use a regex site. That's true. We can use a regex site. Um, let's do that. Because I don't really have um, my usual testing stuff set up. So let's pop over to uh, regex 101. So we have a regular expression, a very beautiful regular expression. <laughs> Uh, and we want to test this value. Also want to make sure that we're using the right kind of flavor of reg regex. There we go. ECMAScript. Test string. Um, okay, so what are we supposed to be doing with the, uh, the groups here? So group six. One, two, three, four, five, six seconds. Seven is milliseconds. Okay, if we parse milliseconds and divide by a thousand, that gives us seconds. And then we add that to total seconds. I mean, I think the regex is actually fine. Except, there's a problem. The problem is this value is not milliseconds anymore. <laughs> right, because the resolution of this, the, the value and the group that goes in here is based on the number of digits in it. Let's make a unit test. Uh, ooh, can we can we just tell Copilot to write a test for I write unit tests for so the final code he shows at uh, is at blame yes using slash test to generate response yeah so we import parts iso duration from the file and it does a describe and then it does various things here and it doesn't include with milliseconds sure except now let's add our specific test case and you figure out how to So let's add our other test case though, where we have not only milliseconds, but with, with <laughs> um, I mean, I guess technically, so what is this? This is like nanoseconds, isn't it? Like nanosecond precision with <laughs> high precision. You spell that word? Do we have just 
as a package. We have the type. Um, we have Vs and Prettier. I guess I don't have Just yet. Or TS Just. That's probably what I want, right? But yeah, the, the issue is specifically this. So this assumes there will be a certain number of digits after the decimal point. Uh, in the comments, no. And really, the funny thing is, is that it, it doesn't really matter as long as you misspell it the same way every single place. <laughs> We're just making stuff up, Foxy. Why not something like millisecond over 10 to the one plus lin milliseconds? Um, yeah, that could work, right? So if the length of milliseconds is zero, so there wasn't anything in it, then it'll be one. It'll be 10 to the one, which will be uh, 10. It'll be zero over 10, which is zero. Uh, well, assuming when we parse the string, we default it to zero, that'll be zero. Um, and then if it had a length of one, if it had a length of one, do we really need the plus, the one plus though? So if it has a length of one, then that'll be 10 squares, so that'll be 100. So that'll be a tenth of a second divided by a, a hundred. So one over a hundred, but that'll be 100. So I think you don't need the one plus len. Um, let's see here, maybe shift T to normalize the digits. I don't know, I don't know, can we? Do I not have any kind of tooling to auto run? Okay, we'll just... Go back to package, package JSON here. Oops, there we go. And I don't have a test script. So let's fix that. There you go. <laughs> so I'm in the front end package. If I do npm run, or just npm test, right? The one is not required. Yep. All right. So uh, we we have complaints, but not about our code. Well, not about the code that we're testing, rather about our test code. It says that we can't import. Uh, do we need to run ts jest? How does that work again? Or do we need to run TS Jest? Mm, yes, but not part of this. Okay. Oops. Save that. So we're going to do... Node modules dot bin TS Jest. Uh, sure. And then what config in it? Should be good. There, all right. It's looking good. So we should see a failure. <laughs> Looks like we see several failures. One failure is because uh, the test code that Copilot wrote was just wrong, presumably. So expected this number and got this number. Um, you can see here, this is this is the test we were interested in. So one thing we can do here is that I'm pretty confident that the things where we are, we have three digits after the decimal are correct. So we can just update those tests and then we'll have actually working tests. So what we expected was this. So that's this part over here that Copilot provided for us. 
well, what, what the actual calculation was, was this value. Yoink. All right. Um, we'll, we'll come back to this one. We, we need to fix that code. Uh, and then on line 25, Copilot gave us the wrong number. Should actually be this, maybe. And then the same thing on line 21. Should actually be this. And then on line nine. So some of these are right, some of these are right. Just not all of them. And then five, yeah. Basically the more complicated cases. Copilot uh, could not infer the correct value to go with this. Or alternatively, something's wrong in our code, but I'm pretty sure everything else is right, except for the decimal precision issue. So that should leave us with one failing test. Ta-da, one failing test. So uh, we are going to roll with uh, Brainless's suggestion. Uh, how do we want to do this? So we have milliseconds. We could I guess one thing is that I wonder if these values are right. Like maybe they're right, but they make me nervous, right? To see like 60 times 60 is 3,600, but why don't we just say 60 times 60 here? Right, That'd be more explicit. 24 hours in a day. Now there's some other ways we could do this too, where we could like loop over the values and aggregate and, and do various things, but this is fine. So there's 12 months in a year. Or wait, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, 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 we're going the opposite way. We are, we're going months into seconds. Is that right? So how many days are there in a month? Well. This is where this kind of falls apart. But let's say that there are 30, roughly. So this is, that right there is kind of a problem with in isolation, trying to take a duration and turn it into a number of seconds. Like expressing a duration in, in, in months is kind of ambiguous if you are not then taking that and applying it to like a calendar. But what are you gonna do? So here we go, now 12 times all of this. And these should be all the same values, just expressed as their their factors, right? So if we run the tests again, we'll see if those, those values we had were right or not. Now this is where we find out that Copilot was right about the other one. <laughs> uh, let's see, so if we go back here. Line five. Received, okay, so it, it was just giving us random numbers in both cases, but different random numbers. <laughs> That's great. That, that is why you should not trust Copilot. Now, honestly, if we hadn't written these tests to check this, we might have never noticed since the code that we're using isn't really expressing the ISO durations, it's just doing like in seconds rather than in date increments. Uh, so we might not have ever noticed. Did we update? 
Okay, 25. Should be this. And then uh, 37 is the one that's broken, right? That we know is not working? Yeah. And then this should be this. Just did some Python testing and it seems to work for many cases. Left plus right divided by 10 to the length of the strength of right. Okay, yep. So uh, we do need milliseconds expressed as an integer, defaulting to zero if it's like an empty string or something. Although I think parts int, if you hand parse int an empty string, I think it will still give you, um, maybe it'll give you not a number. So we probably want the word zero here. But instead of dividing by a thousand, we want to divide by a number based on the length of the uh, the millisecond string, right? So not a thousand, but uh, yeah. Hey, look. Although this thinks you want to subtract one from the length. Milliseconds, milliseconds is a string, so we don't need the question mark there. And I don't think we need that. Uh, I don't think we need the parentheses here either. Do we even need... We don't need the or one either. There we go. Uh, yeah, the 10 in parse and 10 makes it base 10. If you don't do that, and for some reason, for some reason, <laughs> your millisecond string starts with a zero, it can be interpreted as octal, I believe. Let's, let's try that out. Also, hey King, how's it going? Good morning. Uh, yeah, so if you do parse int, and let's say we, we got, you know, a string, <laughs> we we used our regex to get the string for our millisecond value, and we do something like this. Uh, one seven. I could be wrong. I guess I'm wrong. Um, what is it though? If it's like zero x. Yeah, there we go. So we'll interpret hexadecimal. But if you pass in ten. So not octal. I don't know where I got octal from. Maybe a different language, a different place. <laughs> uh, interesting that we don't get not a number here. I would think we would get not a number. What if it's an empty string? There we go, not a number. Okay. Right, so if, if it has some number at the beginning and we tell it it's des you know it's base 10, it's decimal, then it will interpret that number and it will stop when it reaches an unknown character. Okay, cool. So there, there there's a reason to pass 10, just to reduce ambiguity as the base, the radix, if you will, a value between two and 36. So we could be we could be working in base 36 here. Ah, there we go. If you have a prefix of 0x, it's considered hexadecimal. All right, so maybe this works. And you know what? We have a test now, so we can check. Will all the tests pass? Nope. Uh, can't read length of undefined. So we did need <laughs> this, uh, which does mean we need a or zero here. There we go. And this is why we write unit tests. Because this is a lot faster than loading up the front end and checking to see that things are working and trying to get values into the front end to see if it works. We can just test this one little bit of code in isolation. 
Ta-da. All right. Hmm. Well, that was not where I was expecting to start, but hey, at least we fixed the thing. All right, so I think we need to restart the front end to be able to see the changes. Can you see the unit test one sec? Sure. Let me, uh, let me restart the front end. Restart, okay. And then the test is this file. Do you have one for something like left equals one, two, one, three, four, right equals zero, 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 one, two, three? No, but we can add that. Yeah, something that has leading zeros. Copy the thing from the chat. Right, so it should be this, and then copy, paste, paste. So it should be something like this, yeah? Just ignore the red squiggly lines. I need to do something to make VS Code realize that um, we have Jest, but it's fine. It still works. Now, does that test pass? Nope. It does not. Why not? This hurts to understand what any of this means. Well, in short, we have a function, so a discrete unit that is responsible for, we put data in, it does something, in this case it gives data back. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this encoded value and turn it into the number of seconds that it represents, right? So this encoded value is called uh, an ISO 8601 duration. It's a very niche thing, but it represents, in this case, some number of seconds in milliseconds and so on and so forth, a, a period of time. And we're trying to turn that into like a number that we can do math on and pass around. And uh, there's there were a couple of issues, a couple of bugs. Uh, and so uh, one of them appears to be that if the value probably has all these leading zeros, oh, Brainless DM'd me. <laughs> yeah, you have some test code. Uh, yeah, that works. Int left plus int right over thing. Yeah, I suspect in our case, like if we go back to the node prompt, like if we try to parse int, we pass something with leading zeros. Ten. Okay, now that works. You'll be back, Foxy. All right. You did computer science in school, and I'm surprised that uh, not lead me to this. Huh. <clears throat> How do you mean, Alex? So if you did computer science in school, I'm sure they covered functions. Let's <laughs> see if you can convert, convert it to ugly jest. Well, it's interesting, right? So clearly parsing the milliseconds value works and gives us a value of, oh, right, 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 right. So the issue though is that If there are leading zeros, that increases the... No, no, that should be right. right. This should be a very small value, right? This should be parse int over... 
um, 10 times the length, which is seven. Yeah, so that should work. So why is the test failing? Uh, is there something wrong with our regex? Let's go back here. We'll go back to regex 101. We'll put in this value. Uh, oh, we're missing an S. So the issue is <laughs> me. When I put this value in for the test, there's supposed to be an S to be a valid ISO 8601 duration. And I didn't put that in. Okay. Human error. Probably, yeah, bug found. Probably the most important thing to, to learn, to really internalize when you're learning how to program in the first like couple of years, is that if something is not working, it's probably your fault. <laughs> now, there might be several levels of like, thing that you did to get to the point <laughs> uh, where, you know, you did something wrong in step five and now you're on step 20 you may have to do a lot of like tracing back what you did to figure out what you did wrong, but <laughs> the computer always just tell, does what you tell it to do. Or the reality of the situation, operator error, the reality of the situation is of course that it's not just you, right? But a thing you don't wanna do. So back in the day, if you couldn't figure it out, you say, oh, the compiler is doing something wrong, right? Uh, because of course all the other software lets you write software is written by other people they could have made a mistake but that's that's an easy out right but it's it's not impossible <laughs> oh there's an error in you know the javascript but no probably not it's probably just you all right so uh i guess since we fixed another issue Let's uh, <laughs> let's restart the uh, front end again and see if it actually is doing the thing we expect it to do. Yeah, it does. The issue is that I think it's specifically because of Windows. So I'm using Docker Desktop and the Windows subsystem for Linux to um, stuff. And but the file, the file is not in the the WSL folder. Yeah, it's Windows fault. Um, and so. It can't detect, even with like polling, it doesn't seem to want to detect the um, changes to files, even though I have the source code mounted as a volume into the Docker container. Yeah, I know. The issue is that, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the issue is. Everything mostly works. It takes, you know, a few more seconds to click over into Docker and restart it than it would to have the hot reload work. But hey, anyway, um, this looks right. Look, this segment ends and the next segment starts. Honestly, probably what we should have here is that we should take the, uh, subtract the start from the end and just show the duration um, that the segment lasted, maybe? I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, 
So, like I said at the beginning, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to work on the, um, whatchamacallit, silence detection. So we have an API to detect silences in the video. Uh, let's save our progress so far. So we're gonna... Let's see, I, oh, I updated the Vite config earlier to turn polling off because that was using a lot of CPU. So let's get that committed. And then um, we added unit test with Jest. So let's commit that. Perfect. And then we'll commit our ISO duration. Yep. There we go. Push those changes up. Okay. So, front end stuff has happened uh, to the back end. So, our silence detection API has not had as much love as the uh, transcription API. So we did a lot of work with the transcription API to make that all work. And I think, let me uh, get Postman running. I think the actual like detecting a single segment was working last I saw. Right, so here we go. So we are, it's the same kind of API that we're using in the, uh, the individual segment API for the transcription, where we passed it a list of file locations Uh, and a cursor, and then it, it processes a single file. So I think that still should work. Brainless says, did I mention that the engineering manager the other day uh, slipped into conversation if I would prefer to learn Rust or Elixir? Finally seems I will be migrated to a new platform. I think you mentioned something about Elixir. Hey, uh, Dan, how's it going? Good morning. I think you mentioned something about Elixir because uh, I put that note in the coding channel that Foxy uh, reacted, <laughs> confused with. I'm doing good, thanks for asking. I'm uh, coming back into this coding project. I've not looked at it since last week. Um, calling this API and it still works, which is good. So in, in the Discord message, um, I think you must have said something about Elixir because I mentioned that I've I've not used Elixir. I think I've looked at it once or twice as it's come up like uh, on Hacker News and other places. And um, I had played around with uh, Erlang back in the day. You only open Discord for two reasons, to get the password for Power World and to join your, uh, your, your weekly gaming group. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in like a dozen plus different discords and I don't keep on top of all of them. <laughs> that would be like a full-time job. So that's understandable. But um, that's something we could do. You know, one of the, one of the nice things about taking an approach with the uh, only social media users, which um, one of the things we could do, since we have kind of this architecture where we have these backend services that are all running in Docker containers is, you know, we could make some of the APIs uh, using other programming languages. Um, I had initially thought that that's what I was going to do with like having some Python services because we had a, a, a little bit of Python code. For things. Yeah, there's only a couple of discords you go through, Foxy. Same. There's a couple that I'm always 
like a top five. <laughs> yeah, Python's good. I like Python. Um, the original version of this app was a Django app, right? And that was something I had worked on before I said I was going to start streaming, working on this project. Um, but there were things, yeah, you miss using Python on a regular basis. That is, it's just Ruby. I've, I've never really done any Ruby other than like a toy project back, you know, forever ago. Um, there are a lot of similarities. Of course, there are differences between like Ruby and Python, but uh, it's kind of a choose one or the other kind of thing back in the day. And I went with Python because it was there first for me. <laughs> Okay, so let's, we're gonna take a break in a little bit, which is good because then I can get some water and fulfill Alex's demand for hydration. You got used to it, still prefer Python? Yep. Um, what we need to do is a couple things. So I don't know if, I think that like the silence detection segment endpoint to so this thing, detect segment, I think that's all good. Um, and so what we need to do now is implement the top level detect endpoint because the detect endpoint, what it does is it dispatches out to the our task API to say, hey, I have a bunch of video files, please process them. And then the task API calls back to the endpoint that we implemented. Um, and I think this should be very similar to what we did with the transcription API. Uh, and one thing we could probably think about at some point is like, maybe there's some code reuse there. So here's the detect endpoint. So we're parsing out some, some things that aren't, don't apply to the silence detection because we don't, we're not worried about language or, uh, prompts or anything. I think we need URIs and track and HTTP clients and I think we could probably just, I think for now, I'm just gonna copy paste this here. And um, once we do the third one, <laughs> we can look at what the differences are and maybe refactor this into kind of a, a common, like a function that we can reuse and our different services. And there's nothing wrong with that. Although uh, I think there is a feeling thinking of like in a professional setting like if you're using a bunch of different services and you want to encourage like building components for your infrastructure out of like services docker containers what have you um and you don't want to like force you don't want to be in a situation where you feel like you have to use one language then making a library that all your components you your services use then feels like oh well you should use the language because we have a library that does these things um, is an argument that I've heard before. I'm not really convinced because of course you could just make versions of the library for other languages. Uh, anyway, so let's see what needs to be different here. All right, what needs to be different? I think this need, this is fine. Um, this part is fine. The part that is different is where we're calling into, the, uh, we're, we're telling the task API, right? How to call us. And it should be something like that. Is data key segments. So does the text segment what does it return? Is it a segments list? It is it's called segments. There we go. Okay. So, um, I think, yeah, I think that's it. Besides taking out a couple of things that we didn't need. Um, let me save this and we can see now these things are being used. Uh, this should just be, we don't need that underscore there anymore. And now we can, it's all linked together. Um, we should see, yeah, there are some errors, 
right? Because we don't have HTTP client, we don't have task API URL, we don't have this API base URL. Um, we can probably import tracing debug. And yeah, same thing. So what we need to do is we need to go back and add these state elements and um, probably import task and do some cleanup and you know wire things together like in Docker as well to feed in these, these URLs. Uh, but we're gonna do that 